Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to give you an overview of the develop process by working this one photo. Now there is no right answer in terms of what to do to this photo. So instead of trying to steer you to a right answer, my goal is to give you an idea of my thought process as I'm working a photo and to introduce you to some of the tools here in the develop module. Now don't worry about absorbing the details on the tools at this point. There are many subsequent videos to come with all of those details. Now if you're a beginner to working your photos, I also don't want you to get overwhelmed by how many different tools I use to develop this photo. While you're gaining experience, you may find that you just use the basic panel for quite a while. I actually have a blog post called The Single Most Important Thing You Can Do to Get Stunning Results in Lightroom. That one thing is to master the basic panel. So think of this video as showing you where you can go over the long term if you choose to master all or many of Lightroom's developed tools. Now the first thing I notice on this photo is that the edges are darkened. My lens creates a vignette on my photos. Because I've just noticed it, I'm going to go ahead and jump down and fix it. I'll scroll down here to the Lens Corrections panel. I'll click on Enable Profile Corrections to enable this fix. I'll tell Lightroom that I have a Canon lens, and then it will figure out exactly what lens I have based on the metadata. So you'll see that as I turn the check mark on and off, that it brightens the corners and it fixes some barrel distortion. So before and after. Now that I've got that distraction out of the way, I'll go back to the basic workflow. Next, I'm going to crop off the left side of this photo. So I'll go ahead and click on the Crop tool, and I'll click and drag in to crop off the left side. Now I can always change my mind later. All of this work is non-destructive. It can be undone at any point in time. Now I'm going to skip the white balance section, which will allow me to affect the color cast because I really can't judge it at this point. I need to fix the tones in the photo first. So overall, the photo is too dark, so I'm going to increase the exposure, and I'm focusing on the mid-tones in the photo, maybe in this area here. Now the highlights are too bright, and the shadows are too dark. So that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to come down to Highlights and darken them. And then I'm going to bring the shadows up. It's amazing what just these two sliders have done to change the balance of this photo. If I hit the backslash key above the Enter key on US keyboards, you can see the difference. Now the photo is feeling a little too flat, not quite punchy enough. So I'll increase some contrast. Now contrast brightens the brights, darkens the darks. So it immediately starts to darken the front of the building again. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go a little too dark, and then I'm going to fix it a little bit later with another tool. Now over here, I clearly have a problem. This is too bright. The eye goes right here. I don't want anybody focusing on this area. I want people focusing in here. I can't isolate that with any of these tonal sliders, so I'm going to have to do that separately later as well. Now clarity will add some three-dimensionality to the photo, some local contrast. If I go too far, it starts to look grungy, but I'll add a little bit in here. Vibrance and saturation will intensify the colors, but I'm going to work on the colors individually because they're so unbalanced at this point. The yellows and greens are so saturated and the blues are so desaturated. So rather than using vibrance and saturation, I'm going to jump down to HSL, which allows me to control individual components of individual colors separately. So I want to intensify the saturation of the blues, and then I want to darken the blues. So I'll click on Saturation, and I could slide the blue slider, but I love the Targeted Adjustment tool. And I'll click and drag up in the blues to saturate the blues, to increase saturation in the blues. Then I'll go to Luminance, which is Brightness and Darkness, and I'll click and drag down to darken the blues. Now maybe I've taken saturation a little bit too far, so I can go back to Saturation and just jump to the slider and back off a little bit. Next I'm going to come down and work on the yellows and the greens. They just seem too saturated. I'll make sure I'm on the Saturation tab, click and drag down to desaturate, and then I'll look over and see what sliders Lightroom slid. It reduced the yellow some and the green a lot more. Now it may change the balance on this, add some of the green back, and take the yellow down a bit more to balance them out. Next, I'm going to go back to Luminance to work on the brightness of the yellows and greens. I'm thinking that if I darken the yellows in this photo, I may be able to take care of this local problem of that bush being too bright. 
So I'm going to slide the yellows down, and sure enough, it's darkening that area since there's so much yellow there. I have to be careful because it's also affecting this here. If I create a problem by doing this, I'm going to have to go locally and fix that. But I think I've gotten a good balance out of it at this point. The last thing I'm going to do here is see if I can brighten this building just a touch by controlling its color. So I'm on luminance, I'll click and drag up to brighten. And then I'll come over here and look at what colors it slid, so both red and orange. Now I want to see how far I've come with the HSL panel, so I'll turn the switch off here to see before on the panel, and then turn it back on to see after. So just a few sliders have made a huge difference here. Now that I'm done with the HSL panel, I'll put the targeted adjustment tool away. Now right now it seems like it's the edges of the photo that are attracting the attention. They're the brightest. The center seems to be the darkest. So I'm going to go down and add a vignette to this photo. I took the camera vignette off with the lens corrections panel, but now using the effects panel, I'm going to come in and darken the corners subtly just to bring the viewer's eye into the center. Now, for this photo, I don't want to go so far that people are saying, oh, she did a Photoshop vignette. Nothing wrong with that, but really what I'm looking for is something more subtle, just to contain the viewer's eye. So if I hit the switch on and off, I feel like I'm making some progress. Of course, I still have this local issue, but I've balanced the photo out more. Now, in doing so, I feel like the overall photo is a little too dark now, so I'll come back to the basic panel and just brighten this up just a touch. Now it's time to deal with this area. The only choice I have is to paint in where I want to darken. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the adjustment brush, and I'm going to say that I want to paint in with negative exposure. Nothing happens yet because I haven't said where this change is going to happen. So I'll guess on the amount, and then I'll come in here and I'll go ahead and paint. Now once I start painting, I can adjust the amount of darkening. I'll go ahead and finish up painting here. Now as I get close to those bushes, I'm going to try turning on Auto Mask to see if I can protect this darkening from spilling into the bushes. And then I'll go ahead and turn it back off. And I'll fine tune this amount. Now I've done this a little sloppily, but just with this one quick change, if I hit the switch on and off in the adjustment brush, you can see that it makes a big difference in the photo. From here, I might brighten up the front of the building a little bit more. Maybe this side more than this side, and then focusing really on this area here. I'm not going to take the time to do all of that work, but maybe I'll just brighten up this front area. I'll click on New to do a new adjustment, and this time I want positive exposure, and I'll click and drag to paint, and then I'll adjust the amount. And then I'll do one more new adjustment here for the front of that building there. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I should zoom in even more, but for the sake of time. And I'm just going to paint this sign here with positive contrast and some positive exposure to really bring some attention to that. So now I'll zoom out a little bit, come down to the bottom of the adjustment brush, turn the switch on and off. So that's definitely a start. Now, I'm pretty obsessive about this, so now it's bothering me that the tops of these bushes are still too bright. So I could go back down to HSL and try to work with it there, but if I did that, I would be affecting these greens and yellows out here as well. So I'm going to click on New Adjustment, go with Negative Exposure, and just go ahead and further darken down these bushes. I'd be more careful if I had more time. But that gives you a preview of the adjustment brush. I'm going to go ahead and put the adjustment brush away by clicking back on it. Now there's one more change I might consider, and it would be fun to show you, and that is to correct the perspective lines in this photo. Right now they're bending inward because I was photographing looking up at my subject. So I'm going to come down to the lens corrections panel, move to the manual tab, and I'm going to slide the vertical slider to correct those lines. Now once the lines on the building and the pole are going in the same direction. If they're still tilted, then I'll click on Rotate and just rotate the photo a little bit to get them all evened out nicely. Once I'm done, I've got to crop out this gray area. Lightroom can do it automatically if I click on Constrain Crop. And there I have a straightened photo. Now frankly, I actually like it better with the lines bending inward, so I'm going to do Ctrl or Command Z a couple times 
to back up to before I did that correction. Now the last step in my workflow would be noise reduction and sharpening. For that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the building here. And I'm going to click and drag to come to where I consider the main subject area where, where we have some crisp edges. Now there is some noise in the front of this building. It's a little bit grainy. And that's because I very much underexposed the front of the building. So I'm going to go up to the detail panel, open it up, collapse this little preview here, and I'm going to work with the luminance noise reduction. So I'm just going to slide it up enough to get rid of that grain. I don't want to lose detail in the photo. I don't want it to look like a painting. So that seems to have done a nice job. It may be kind of hard to see in the video, but I would do the noise reduction, and then I would come up and take a look at sharpening. Now for sharpening, I would recommend starting with one of the presets that Lightroom comes with. Here in the Lightroom General Presets, we have sharpening for faces and sharpening for scenic photos. So I'll click on Sharpen Scenic. Now I'm going to turn the switch on and off in the detail panel to see the before and after. Now here's the before. Now it wasn't sharpened and it didn't have noise reduction. And now it's sharpened and it has noise reduction. Now from here I'd refine the sharpening. It seems a little harsh. If I just turn off the sharpening and I show you before, you can see that the sharpening cuts through the haze that a digital capture provides. But it was a little harsh, so I'm just going to back off a little bit on the amount. And I might also consider doing some masking to mask off smooth areas in the photo. But I'll leave that discussion for my video on sharpening and noise reduction. I'm going to go ahead and click to zoom out, and I'll collapse this panel. And you'll see if I hit the backslash key on and off that we've come a long ways on this photo. With some more adjustment brush fine tuning on the balance of light on this building, I'd be very satisfied with the result. Now I hope this has been useful in giving you an overview of the develop process so that as you're watching the individual how-to videos on the tools and panels here in the develop module, you can keep in perspective how they fit into the bigger picture. Hopefully this demonstration has also gotten you excited about learning those tools. This concludes the video on the overview of the development process.